guys here for example it says Estación de Mora which is the train station of Mora de Rubielos the, the village where we are staying and in this bar exactly in these buildings it, it has the the largest truffle market in Spain every Friday night and it's yeah. right there and it's sold every every Friday night two tons uh, every Friday more or less of truffles this this season so in nice seasons it's normally a little bit more and every what, Friday what time, what time it's, it? The, it starts normally when it gets dark and then the truffle hunters they come here the traders they meet on the bar and they start negotiating the price and sometimes it's really fast and in an hour everyone is gone and it's easy to see you know if the price is good and the hunters are happy and then they stay there and have dinner there <laughs> if the price is not good you know and then they are uh, shit, then they have a beer and they go <laughs> so there's uh jordy come here for this month. one of his buyers yeah. and from here we are entering into manzanera and sarrion and just in this village there is 3,500 eggs planted, okay? Just in, in one village, or the territory of one village. There are several nurseries. There are several 50 hectares, they are keep on planting a little bit more, but he says it's too much now to manage, so they say it's, it's enough 50 hectares. And these are the facilities that they have where they have the tractors and the docks you will see now. So I don't know, so he's the owner, so let's ask all the questions you need, okay? The idea now is maybe to go and see the machinery they are using, and after that we will go to see, I don't know, some of the of the orchards and how they are harvesting the truffles and, and so on. So, you know, the, it's hard for the dogs. So normally they, they, so they start probably at eight and every two hours they come back and they change the dogs. So the dogs rest for a couple of hours and then they go back, they come back, you know, they have some lunch and they change the dogs again. And normally they go with a couple of dogs, you know. Sometimes if you have an extraordinarily great dog, then it's normally one. And sometimes it's even a dog for two people. But if normally you have a couple of dogs, for each hunter. So in order to be, you know, less than a week and get back to the initial place, it, you need you need a hunter for every eight hectares. This is the average. Of course, it really depends on the yields. Okay? It's not everything, but there is like 16 hectares that they were the same trees for the same supplier. Like they are getting that average of around 200 kilos per hectare. We can talk later about exactly on the field what they do but I, I, I told you that it was <laughs> what they normally do you know it's it's normally they they you will see now the machinery they they, they go with a reaper to, to put the substrate with the spores okay normally in these places depending on the layout or if the irrigation you will see they spend a lot of money in irrigation and they buried the pipes to be able to cross okay and then, right. okay, yeah. and then they bury the substrate, and but the substrate, if if we if this is the soil surface and this is the tree, you know normally it will be like like a, like a drainage, mm -hmm. you know, with the substrate. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is normally, as I told you, from min minus ten centimeters mm -hmm. to minus. Uh, 30 centimeters mm -hmm. so it's quite a precision truffle yeah. farming okay so and then they can use these vibro tillers and they can because uh, at the end of the truffle season so normally in the next two weeks three weeks they are just doing that and putting the substrate with the truffles and after that they can just <laughs> come with the vibro tiller and and go over 
or they do it at the same time. But the idea is because they have trenches of every, the other years, they don't disturb, you know, the holes and the substrate they did it in the previous years. Because they use this, and, uh, and they control quite well the, the, the weeds. It's not, it's not like in Chile and Australia, there's not a huge problem on the, on the weeds, but there's some of them, okay, in, in the, mainly in the, in the springtime. So in fact, you can keep on working during the spring if you want, because you are not disturbing what is underneath. See, he says, yeah, this is the normal, you know, the normal tillers commonly use more in the old times that they were using those ones, but now they are moving to vipro tillers. Do you prune the trees first and then do the vibro tilling? El pregunta que qué se hace from the last normally the last two weeks of March. Yeah. They get in with this and the, they go. The first tractor is pruning and all the branches get in the ground and then they come with this chopper. I, you say chopper, I think. Chopper, oh, yeah. So it just goes and chop all the branches in yeah. behind. Okay. Do you prune um, on top and the sides? No, sí, general, aquí estos árboles creo que solo los podáis en los lados, no por encima todavía no estáis podando. No, no. Now in the top they are still not doing that. Okay, they are just pruning like that in the in the sides. Yeah. Yeah. He says you can put it as as you want. Yeah. The growth season of a tree is normally during the spring. It stops during the summer. Even they have some irrigation, but normally it's too hot. So the ilex stop growing. And then they grow during September, October again. So it's not like in Australia or in Chile, where the window of vegetative growth, you know, can be from the whole spring, mm -hmm. summer, and even autumn. So that's why, you know, the, the, the average in any forest in Spain, normally the average of timber production is too cool two cubic meters of timber per hectare you know and in Australia New Zealand it's 24 okay wow. so per year so this is they grow really slowly here in the in the places I mean in the orchards that they can just they can just cross uh, they, they make with the reaper the, and the subsoiler the, the substrate, but if you can just do it, you know, one side, they come with this kind of digger or pop cut, so they make holes with the substrate. So at the end, in most of the orchards, it's a combination of trenches and holes with the substrate where the trench cannot go. Or if they don't have the pipes of irrigation buried and then they are on the surface, then, you know, in the sides of the, of the irrigation pipe, they just make holes. Then another guy is going behind just filling, <coughs> filling the holes with the substrate with the spores. And they use this to make the substrate. In late March, they are doing the mixer. So they put, just it's mainly the pit moss and the perlite and the, and the truffle spores. They make a kind of a slurry and they mix it here and they put it in that big tongue that it's outside so we can see it and with the subsolar they just put the substrate on the ground okay what, what, sort, of ratio, what sort of ratios of peat moss and normally it's everyone does it its own but it's like seven seventy percent of peat moss thirty percent per light because the peat moss it's hard to get moist it's turba turba Ah. La turba is una combinación de turba y perlita. So the pit moss, once it gets dries up, it, it's hard to, to get moist again. So you need to put something else like perlite or vermiculite or mm -hmm. so. Okay. So is there any moisture in that mix when they put it in? Or is no, it dry? no, yeah. no. Yeah. Normally it's dry. And um, uh, I don't use moisture in with my mix? No, they, well, they add just a little bit the, with the slurry of the truffle, you know, on it, yeah, but it's okay. the, it doesn't get really wet. And pit moss is acidic? Yeah, the, of course, the, the pit moss is acidic. Most of the pit moss are pHs of 7, 4. I, I sorry, 3, 4, but you can buy some of them, buffer it at 5, and they add more lime up to 8, normally. And you can see here the tool is slightly different than the Catalan one. 
Okay? <laughs> but it's at the end, it's more, more or less the same. It's filling and, and burring all the, all the substrate, normally at those 30 centimeters deep. And then they call, this is covered, and, and that's all, okay? If you want to see inside, but there is something to mix and to make it easy to, to go down, okay? To control a little bit the grass, so they, they come with this mower and goes, you know, just making this. Yeah, they, I mean, the, this is the solenoid, you know, the valves to switch on every sector, but it's, it, it's done through the computer and they even manage in the mobile phone. Sí, ahí yeah. están las emisoras. En todos los bancales tenemos las emisoras. Yeah. Ahí, ahí está outside, outside they have the radio stations I control for each <coughs> plot, okay? And some research is in the small not, but no, not really for control. Dale, dale. So, I mean, we go, we go with him, with Ricardo now, to hunt some truffles here. We can talk as well about management. Emilio has to go, okay? So we, we tell him bye-bye. But when you have an orchard, we can maybe stop to see the older ones later. But normally, the old trees produce truffles earlier in the season, okay? So, it's most of... Uh, of, of what uh, the old orchards need to produce, it's already produced, or now it's decaying production. But the youngest trees normally start to produce a little bit later on the season. I so see. these are more now in full production. So it was like farmland. You can see these ilex, for example, has a disease. So um, it's, it's probably... The perlite and the, and the substrate, okay? But it, this, is, this is a long sandy soil. Okay, really touch it. It's quite sandy, so with not a lot of, you know, pyramids. Farmers, they are they are doing that. I mean, they go with the with the GPS, and each time. Ah, yeah. So it's it's time they they so they they have geo reference each tree, and each time they harvest a truffle, they make pop 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 pop. So at the end, you download on the computer and you see the track you've done and how many truffles have you harvested in each place. So if you put in the computer the prunings, the treatments you've done, you know, when you put the substrate, so on, you can have a really nice track and records of. Yeah, la, la eh? yeah. Wow, it smells a lot yeah. from here. Yeah. <laughs> they don't feed the dogs. The, 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 the dogs just feed while working. Okay. Eh, no estaremos mucho rato. Cuando cuando voy yo solo, a lo mejor estoy toda la mañana con el perro. Entonces, claro. a la, de la mañana come mucho el perro. Yeah, he says that no. Normally, when chicos, they stay the whole morning with them. As you saw on these sandy soils, it's more easy to get those extra truffles. Okay. And you see the substrate as well with the perlite. Sometimes it's hard to see because they make the hole two years ago, you know, and it gets like a little bit composted. Okay. You can see then you get more round shapes. You will see. I mean, most of the truffles we are going to get will be in the in the substrate. It's, it's lovely that one, that yeah, tree is not nice. so strong, it's yeah, a really it's nice smell. But uh, as you see, for now the three marks of the dog, they are three holes with the substrate.
Yeah. Well, it's nice. It's good to do this. <laughs> ah, okay. And probably he's just for the smelling dust, or so maybe there's nothing, or maybe it was a small piece from the other day. Here where he gets 200 kilos per hectare. Yeah. In an average, which is a, it's you, and you see it's all the holes. And it's a bacteria that, and especially when the tree starts moving, the sap starts, you know, the, even the, the leaves they cry. Yeah. So that that has lots of spores. Okay. When we do those screenings on the trophies, that we we, I mean, we think it's not. We we found. So it's it's really common. Significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, sometimes you don't get so many kilos, and and sometimes it's great. But sometimes they can be, you know, 100 grams and so on. But this is a common. You get three, four, seven. and they compact a little bit the ground yeah. and uh, there's a really rocky soil and uh, they didn't green it but it's now in everything most of the new plantings they, they grind the yeah. Yeah, at the end, if, if you make up everything but normally it's, uh, it's around 20 20 every 10 days, 20 millimeters, 20 liters per square meter every 10 days. The idea is to water to 30 centimeters deep because it's where the trenches with the substrates are, okay? And if they go, they dig, and when it dries up, in fact, the first 8, 10 centimeters, water again because the wells with the substrate are at that depth. And you want, in fact, to fruit the truffles at that depth, not the shallow ones. This is the idea, okay? Lots of data loggers, of sensors of humidity at different depths in the ground. And uh, so the idea is to water in a more professional way, you know, not, not really just doing that, just to see more efficient, really, you know, how deep it goes, every rain or every, every watering, you do in the in the trophy and you want the air to go through the canopy yeah so they're opening the canopy yeah inside otherwise the tree the the i mean the the kirkus ilex as, act as a funnel and uh, all the rain goes through the branches and all the water is on the tree trunk it, and then it comes a rain but in the brulee, it just stays uh, dry, you know. So it's wet outside. It's wet just on the tree trunk, yeah, 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 yeah. but the, the water doesn't reach. So it needs yeah. to reach through the canopy, and that's why lots of the truffle, especially the first years, they are just attached to the tree trunk in in Kirkus ilex or any most of the trees. But it's really common. They are just on the tree trunk because all the water runs there. Yeah, you know, like. Maybe high density, you can get a little bit more kilos at the beginning, but at the end, with 280 trees per hectare, you get really high yields yeah. anyway. Yeah. You can see that there's large plantations. That's high. Because ilex, this is uh, some bushes of coptifera, but. Uh, this is a normal vegetation and they truffles naturally. Yeah, yeah. lots of them, but now not gathering wild truffles. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we do some consultancy for, for this grower. Yeah. This guy, in fact, is it's one of the examples we put on the book that we that we just edit. And uh, and this this orchard is it's 35 hectares. Uh, so he was one of the first ones to plant here. Now I think it's 29 years old, uh, Kirkus Ilex. He put the irrigation, but because he did it too shallow, now he cannot uh, till, right. uh, you know? Right. Otherwise he's breaking all the, the, all, the, the all the pipes that are buried. So since he did that, the soil is getting more and more compact and more compact, and the truffles are fruiting more shallow, more shallow, more small truffles, and this guy, for example, had an average 
it, he he started getting truffles from good yields from year eight in advance, and then when he reached 14, was the best yields. That of course some areas produces more than others, but in average, in the 35 hectares, can be 50 kilos per hectare, more or less. So he got those 50 kilos per hectare, more or less, from 14 to 24 years. And the last five years, it's just going down, 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 okay. losing production, maybe getting the same quantity of truffles, but smaller, smaller, oh, smaller, yeah. smaller. So at and the end, you are using yields. You said in year 14, he installed the irrigation. Yeah, I, I can remember, but it's 50 you know? kilos. Yeah, but it's, but it's probably because it's, it's, it's just the, the size and the age of the trees. The common here in all this area, when you reach 14, 13, 14 is when you really get nice yields okay. in this area. And so he was thinking what to do, the owner. We were talking last year, you know, it's probably in a few years or so maybe to abandon and because uh, it's, it's decaying, okay? So this is probably what it's going to happen with lots of things that it's been planted in this area. When they reach 30 years, something like that, they, the production will decay <coughs> and you will reach a, a, a threshold that the yield will probably w will not be worth the cost, yeah. for the, the cost, cost of yeah. maintenance or for making substrates and you know and and it's a mistake. So it's a mistake. Well, yeah, and um, yeah. and uh, and that's all. Kirkus Ilex is the best host tree, but it's 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 always sensitive, and and we are seeing that there's lots of diseases, cankers is spreading of course. Uh, everywhere. So it should, and you will see now that there's mixes and in uh -huh. and Kerkus Kerkus Fagini is giving quite a good uh -huh. yields as well. They uh -huh. start fruiting more or less at the same time that yeah. Alex. Yeah. But at the end Alex is it's easier to manage. They grow I mean that you will see that the Kerkus Fagini and the Kerkus Humilis are the, the other deciduous oaks uh -huh. they tend to grow more higher uh -huh. so there's more effort and pruning and okay. controlling and and yeah. we we want this open canopy all the time yeah. here. Yeah. But yeah these yeah. monocultures are more sensitive to they have mm -hmm. problems mm -hmm. yeah. and it's the same when you increase density mm -hmm. high density orchards are more sensitive to, course, to have yeah, orchards yeah. to have diseases yeah, Thank <laughs> you.